The state's finances have improved, but the economy still makes for challenges that can impact Arizona's cash flow. Here to talk about that and more is State Treasurer Doug Ducey. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Tom. How's it going so far? We haven't had a chance to talk since you took office. Well, so far, so good. I mean, it certainly is a different world from the private sector, but being involved in state government, especially in the situation that we're in right now, not only statewide, but nationally, has been exciting and challenging. Let's talk about the situation we are in statewide. How are we doing? As a state, we're doing well. I mean, if you think about just where we were just a, a year ago. Uh, I was running on a platform that our budget's broken, our finances are a mess, and we need some fresh energy and a business approach. Well, I, I feel good about what we've been able to do there. That budget is balanced. There's no tricks. There's no gimmicks. There's no new rollovers, and there was no borrowing. That's a lot different than other states. And the treasurer can't take all the credit for that, but you can't get that done without a, a responsible legislature and a strong governor. And very very few other states did that, actually balanced their budget. Critics of that balancing budget effort are saying that, that you know, costs have been pushed onto cities, onto counties, onto hospitals, onto a whole bunch of other folks just in terms of balancing the state budget. Is that a viable argument, a valid argument? The simple fact is, is there just isn't any more money, and states don't print money, unlike the federal government. So the state had to tighten its belt, just like every family and small businessman has had to tighten his belt since 2007. Government was the last to do it, and they were late to do it. So now state government's done it, so do counties and cities. They have to tighten their belt. Let's talk about some of the things you've had to deal with, up to and including some of these state legislature's actions. They, they tried to sweep this transit program, and it sounds like that didn't quite cut the mustard. That's got to go through. You got to make sure that money gets back to where it was originally, correct? I think some of the game playing of the past is going to be over, and I think there's uh, this idea. Even if you go to the treasurer's website, aztreasure.gov, you the first thing you'll see is the state's cash balance. And if you remember, the state treasurer is the state's banker and investment officer. We do, we don't collect tax dollars. We don't spend tax dollars. We safeguard and invest them. We actually make money for state government. Well, and let's let's talk about what. What you do as far as the state uh, money is concerned and how you are inv talk about Arizona's investment portfolio here what are you concentrating on what are you looking at well this is a difficult time certainly to invest and the first priority in the treasurer's office is always going to be safety a, a dollar lost is not measured the same way as a dollar gain so you do want to protect the principal and we've been very good at that in the treasurer's office we manage about ten billion dollars depending on what happens in the market over the course of a day uh, and we want to make sure that that money is there to pay the teachers to pay the firefighters to fill the potholes that we don't lose that money and at the same time that we earn interest earnings on that money. before you took office did you see did you have kind of a plan maybe a formula as far as investing the state's money now that you're in office uh, have those goalposts moved a little bit well, I think just because of the economy that we're in and what we're seeing in the markets with all the volatility, there is a premium on safety and preservation of capital. At the same time, we want to do the right things for the permanent land endowment. This is something that will invest into perpetuity. It has a, a balance today of about $3.1 million. As the state continues to sell state land, those proceeds come in. Mm -hmm. And that will be a very large endowment. And that's one reason to be very optimistic about the future of Arizona and in Arizona's K-12 education. Talk about a moving target. Uh, talk to us about things that happened back in Washington, the debt ceiling debate and that whole embroglio, uh, the idea of downgrading U.S. credit. Obviously, a focus on D.C., but an impact on America. And last I checked, we were still part of America here, so it's got to impact us to a certain degree. That does all impact Arizona. And I really think Washington, D.C. could learn something from Arizona. If you look at what our state legislature did, we did balance that budget. We are spending less next year than we did the previous year. So th this can be done. But when things like the, uh, the debt ceiling happen and the debt is downgraded, that affects the state of Arizona, and that can affect interest rates. It hasn't affected interest rates yet because the Federal Reserve is artificially pinning them down. But over the course of time, I have a concern that interest rates will rise, and that will hurt people in their borrowing and in the purchasing of, of different things that we need to do in terms of infrastructure for the state. How much does that change your planning if you have that concern? I mean, how far ahead do you look? How far ahead do you plan? 
Well, we plan ahead in the in endowment. We want to think into perpetuity. So you want to have an asset allocation that can navigate through this type of volatility. And then in the other part of our funds, which is really daily operating cash, you want to make sure that you can pay the state's bills. So you're dealing in very short-term interest that can't earn any money in this interest rate environment. As a businessman getting into this government position, anything surprise you? Anything uh, didn't surprise you? What are you seeing? Well, I think I would say I'm surprised by the state employees that I work with. I think they're incredibly competent, they're hardworking, and their heart is in the right place. And they want to do a good job. So they really will rise to the level of expectation. And the other thing that has been surprising to me is we were very workmanlike in Arizona in terms of what we ran on and what we did. And as state treasurer, you get to meet other state treasurers from other states. And I'm really surprised that our neighbors like California and other places like Illinois are so incredibly irresponsible in how they handle their state budget. Well, and that's the last question I want to ask you. During the campaign, you, you talked a lot about trying to get jobs to Arizona. And some folks were wondering what, you know, the treasurer can only do so much, balance the books, and that's, that's a job in and of itself. Um, now that you're in office, can you see that being a more difficult thing for a treasurer to do in terms of just basically saying, I helped get that company from Illinois, that company from California to Arizona? Well, I think I would call it challenging, but not impossible. Arizona has grown as a state, and people really vote with their U-Hauls and rider trucks, and we've been winning in that game. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we have fewer public companies in the state of Arizona today than we did 10 years ago. Why is that? What's going on? Well, that's an excellent question. Why is it? I would say it's because we didn't have a strategy. We didn't have a plan to attract businesses and to retain the companies that we have here. And I think what you're starting to see is the first step towards that type of strategy. We know what a great quality of life we enjoy here. We know people are moving here from other places and saying, I'm staying. We need to get those companies to do that, but you have to do that by building relationships. That's both state leaders and business leaders standing shoulder to shoulder to bring these companies here. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Thanks we appreciate for having it. me. Appreciate it.